Hi there. Um, I think like most of people, I've uh, had a bit of time off in August, but uh, September's arrived and we're ready to get back at it. Um, you know that the last videos that you probably watched were the series on how to find, fix, rent, and then repeat your way to a property portfolio. I think it was really important to um, record that series, you know, laying it out step by step, almost as a reference. Uh, and I can see that the numbers show that people are going back and watching it over and over again, which was kind of what it was for, to be honest, that's really good. Um, it's safely stored away on a playlist on YouTube. So if you, I'll put a link in this description. So if you wanna go back to it, um, do that. And I think we will be doing that. It's timeless. We, we, we recorded it in a way that um, I know that if you'd have watched it 10 years ago or you watched it today, everything in there is still relevant. So uh, I'm happy that that's done. There'll be more similar playlists like that, how to, and then a series of um, showing you how to do whatever it is that it is. Like I said, I think we've got about 77 videos there, but I think it's also important to do videos like this. Um, I've scheduled in a couple of um, slots in my week. This one is half time at my son's rugby match. Um, so that I know that I've always got a bit of time to, to do a video. And I've asked for all your questions in the last video and I keep getting them. Uh, got a few here and I think it's gonna be, I, you know, reading through them, there's too many to get through in uh, probably a hundred videos, honestly, which has been a bit overwhelming and good. Um, I have got one quick message. If you have a direct question to, the, to our business, my business, please just use the normal channels. Scrolling through some of these videos and I'll be honest, I haven't got through them all yet. Um, uh, yeah, there, there's some you know, sort of direct questions that probably should have been answered a week ago, two weeks ago or whatever. Um, so th that forum isn't for that. You know, if you've got a, got a proper business question, ask it through the normal channels. I should have made that clear myself, I guess. Um, so I want to do a market update today. It's September. Um, I think people are, they, they want a bit of um, clarity, security, uh, that idea of knowing what's coming, what's around the corner. Nobody likes the uncertain. And uh, I think I can give you that in a slightly different way. Um, if you're tuning in to find out here what is going to happen in the property market, I can tell you, nobody's got a crystal ball, um, but I think it's pretty obvious. Um, the way we are, we're in an, an, an unprecedentedly um, severe uh, recession. Um, the house prices are going to fall, for sure. And I can give you that reassurance. Now, why am I sat here with a smile on my face? Because I am. Um, uh, yeah, what, 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 how are we going to be making buy to let work in, in that backdrop? And the reassurance I can tell you is it doesn't matter. Uh, in actual fact, it's good for you. I'm going to take 30 seconds right now just to say, you know, nobody likes to watch a guy sat there saying, that when other people are um, in financial difficulty or struggling, then they're going to make um, you know, take advantage of it. And that's not what we're talking about. Um, when we find a house, fix it up, we create a decent safe home for a long-term rent. It's just what the UK needs. And um, it, it, it's an overwhelmingly, and from my point of view, only positive story. Um, being in the market when other people are looking to sell, even desperately sell maybe, um, could be viewed as opportunistic. It can also be uh, viewed as you're the capital that's keeping that uh, that market liquid when other people wouldn't be. So you're the brave soul who is is taking the plunge. I don't view it like that. I don't think you have to be particularly brave when you understand it. So um, just a few uh, really technical, well, not technical is the wrong word, but specific uh, market updates. I mean, there's been a lot of news about um, the market's rushing away and um, you know, Lot, estate agents are busy and solicitors are busy. A load of rubbish. Um, of course they're busy. They are. They're not going to stay busy for long. They're not recruiting anymore. They're, they're uh, estate agents we're talking about. They're not really open for business properly yet, still in September. Um, so of course they're busy. You know, if your doors aren't open and you've got half as number of staff that you had before and you've got a backlog of work, no matter what right move says, how many views people had on houses or whatnot, it's, it's pent up demand, but there's less demand overall. The fact that it's three or four months demand and it's less, it still makes it a big bottleneck to get through in August, September, but make no mistake, estate agents aren't re-recruiting. Uh, the solicitors that I know, they're happy to be busy, but they've let a load of staff 
go and they're not bringing that, those staff back. They know that once they got through this you know, pipeline went whoop, squeeze, and now once it's gone down, they're expecting that pipeline to be thinner. Uh, we are already seeing valuations being held back. So a market tested um, uh, price on a house, let's say it's sold on the open market for 200,000 pounds. The bank surveyor goes around and says, don't think it's worth 200. Uh, we think it's worth 180. So they're pulling the market back that way. People aren't back in the office. Um, furloughs ending this month, next month, and then there's Brexit. So things are going to go down. Absolutely, in fact, can't, can't, can't help it. It feels like 2008, and I've lived through 2008. We made a lot of money in 2008, 9 and 10. Um, and none of this matters to the serious investor. That's what I'm saying. All this doom and gloom that will be on the news, embrace it. Um, it's a lot of noise. The houses you already own, if you already own some houses, they will lose value. Don't worry about that. The one thing that you need to know is if you're, if you're not selling that house, you're not going to lose the money, are you? If there's a point when you're going to be losing money by selling, it means you're going to be making money by buying. The opposite is true. You can't have it both ways. So just resolve never to sell. That should be part of the plan anyway, or at least a very, very long term view. And then get buying. Now is the time to buy. Um, looking through some of these questions, I can see a lot of it is, a lot of the questions are, um, you know, th th there's a core of them, but there's some of them are sort of time limited. Some of them are, you know, the, the, I can answer that question now or the next 10 years and it'd be the same question. You know, how, how do I get the money? How do I do this? How do I do that? But some of them are, I'm holding off because uh, I think I'm going to try and, and time the market. I can see the market's going down now. Um, a couple of things I've almost just got some bullet points on that and they're kind of interrelated I don't want to try and tie them all together I'm not smart enough to try them all together together I'm not an economist but um, it is true that you would lose money if you sold you need a plan and a, uh, a system that says I'm just not going to sell the way that we buy we buy cheap we add value we rent it out so that um, the, the adding value is, is a renovation, making it into a decent and safe home, so then we can rent it out to a tenant that pays decent market rent, so we make money every month. And then we take our money back out of the property because we do a refinance. The way we buy that way means that we can just keep going and going and going. One of the temptations might be, in the, and you can see it almost in your mind's eye, where you've got a, a, a price, the prices of the properties are coming down, why, do we, why would I be buying into a falling market? And there's a couple of things to say on that. The main one, and I'll keep coming back to it, there's a couple of different things, is the opportunity cost. They don't go down for very long. They also don't go down very far. People will be surprised if you do a bit of research how far house prices ever go in even the worst crash, how far down they go. Um, if you believe the Daily Mail, they'd say 50%. If you look at the stats, it's closer to 10 to 15% in any one year and that's in a year. So things move quite slowly and they don't go very far. The numbers you're looking at are national averages, 15, 20%, whatever it is, or 10, 15%, they're national averages. You are not buying in that market. You're buying in a different market. And in actual fact, there's, there's, a, there's a case to be argued that says the sort of 50 to 100,000 pound houses, those prices may still go up. There's a lot of cheap money out there, a lot of investors piling in and um, you know, interest rates being low and, and, and whatnot. So that, there's an argument for that as well. Uh, hope, hopefully that doesn't happen. Otherwise it means that uh, people like me and people like you who wanted to build their property empire uh, become, um, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd drive a, a seller's market at that point, a little, little buy to let seller's market. And that's still a possibility. We can see it in some little pockets where we're buying, but not all. Um, so the idea of trying to time uh, the market Never, never try and time it. Um, I'm going to give you a slightly contradictory message by the end of today because I'm saying do not try and time it. Um, always be buying, in actual fact. However, what's happening now, if you were to try and time it, now would be a good time. I appreciate that's a contradictory message. Um, I consistently and solidly buy properties all the time, every month, every month, every month. But I can tell you now I've released a war chest um, done some refinances at the lowest rates that I've ever seen, you know. So I've got some money in my pocket and we're going to go buying. And I would always have said that. I would always have done that. But I'm particularly excited about it right now because 
I can see that um, the opportunity is just around the corner. Uh, don't try and time it, it's happening now. The prices are getting soft. You can find a deal when you get a deal. If if you were uh, slightly concerned, there's a bit, little bit of maths you could do and this is the opportunity cost. You know, If you try and time it bang on and you missed, because you probably will, um, or start the whole process a year before or six months before, you'll probably fit an extra one or two purchases in in that time, buying the fine, fix, rent, um, refurbish, and, sorry, uh, refinance model. In that time, not only will you have extra houses, you will have extra rent. Um, I'll, give, I'll leave you with one last thing before I sign off. And it's, um, I remember I was told it time and time and time again. It was in 2008 and nine when the prices were falling and I was buying mainly in Nottingham at that time. And before the crash, the houses I was buying were worth a hundred thousand pounds. Actually, no, they weren't. They were probably more than worth about 80, 85 actually. Um, yeah, about 80, 85. And during the crash, um, I had the opportunity very quickly within, within a year or so to be buying some of those at 65 and they came down to 60 and then some went down to 55. And that was kind of the bottom. There was some that were a little bit lower than that, but they, they generally had, you know, I bought, bought one that had been burnt out and didn't have a roof. Yeah, so that was, that was a lot cheaper, but you know, that, that was a general band. And I remember the conversation, people were telling me, oh, you just lost 5,000 pounds. You just lost 10,000 pounds. The price you paid for the, the 55,000, so the 65,000, you've now bought the same house for 55,000. You've just lost 10,000 pounds. What they just didn't get is everything is spread over a timeline. The opportunity cost, Somebody would have bought that house at 65 and 60 and 55, and it want, I, I wanted to be that person. Um, it wouldn't have been available at 55. If I hadn't bought it, somebody else would have done it. It wouldn't have just to keep coming down in price and been available at 55 or even 50, you know? That wouldn't have happened. Um, so I bought as many houses as I could. The house prices didn't drop. Something weird happens with the comparables at the end. They're actually still quite good. So I managed to get all my money out of the house that was 60 or 55 or 50, it didn't matter. Um, and then I was able to buy three more houses in the same next period with the same three pots. Those houses are all worth at least 85, 90,000 pounds now. Um, some of them are worth 150, 160,000 pounds. I guess another interesting point is I couldn't have told you which ones would have been which. If I'd have guessed which ones were going to be worth 100 or 150, I'd have probably got it wrong then. So now's a good time to be buying always is a good time to buy. See you next week.